since we're kind of talking about that, how do you break up the work? How do you, how do you pull that stuff apart? And how granular do you get when you're doing your planning? Well, I mean, I usually try to break it down to say a quarter to say two to four hours, say a quarter to a half a day. So if something's going to take me longer than if I think something's going to take me a week to do, I'm going to break that down further. Now I may not necessarily in the project management tool document all those sub steps. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might d document it somewhere in there. But at least mentally, if I have a task assigned to me, I'm going to break break it down into subgroups from there. Right. Particularly if, like, if estimation is important, like they want to know how long a particular thing is going to take, then I'm definitely going to do the sub breakdowns, because otherwise it's some, you know, it's like, oh, it's going to take me one to two weeks. But how did you come to that estimate? There's no way to, you know, you would need to break it down into subtasks to get to a better estimate. Right. And, and I think for me, my experience has been the answer to that question is it depends. It depends very largely on the team and who's who's working at what level on the team. So the more junior the team is, I have found the further I need to break things down because I need to hand more atomic pieces to junior members um, as they're learning. But if I've got a bunch of, you know, develop, developer four and fives on the team, I can give, I, I don't have to break things down as much. I, there can be bigger chunks to hand out because they intuitively know that these are the steps I'm going to have to go through to well, get they're going to break it down for you. Right. But we don't have to do that physically in the, like in Jira oh, right, or right. Trello or something. Yeah, have all that detail. Um, but but if I've got a really junior team, then that that does need to be done, because they you know at that level if you if you know your first year out of college you need some guidance to and we'll talk a lot more about this next week when we talk about the people part of project management. But you have to do these breakdowns a little more atomic with more junior people because they just don't have the experience yet to mentally break that stuff down. Um, what what needs to go on, especially in a real for-profit production environment. Because uh, there are more things to consider than just the code. Um, well, actually, going back to this, how, how to breaking the, down the work to be done, what... Like the organizations that you've worked with, are there a bunch of senior programmers or is it mostly junior level programmers? Is it a mix? And if they're bringing forth a big new feature or how do they break up the work to be done? Well, again, what have you seen works or do doesn't work? I I've actually been involved in, in all kinds of mixes. I've had, you know, like almost purely junior things that were on um, kind of starter projects or or bug fix teams. Um, and, you know, with bug fixes, those are pretty atomic anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've also had, you know, all senior folks that, uh, you know, you can just say, hey, we, we, need a, we need a complete revamp of this whole section of the program. Go. Um, and they just knew what to, you know. But presumably, if it were, there were multiple ones, they would each break up and take a particular piece to tackle. Right, yeah, yeah. Or or maybe pair program it or something. If you have a bunch of senior programmers and you say, hey, we need to design this new big module, right. would what? they take it and break it up amongst themselves what they want to tackle? Or would uh they... A lot of times, yeah. Well, I mean, because I've been I've been both lead and and um, non lead in those kind of environments, and 
almost universally will just say, here's the glut of work that we've got to get done in this in this um, sprint. Who wants to take what? And then people say, oh, I'll take that because I'm an expert on that part. And I'll take that because and it's, you know, two or three big chunks or however many team members there are. And sometimes if we don't have that many chunks, what will end up happening is, OK, you two guys go pair on this thing. Yeah. And you two go pair on this thing, and then I'll take this smaller one. Right. But it's still dealt with a chunk at a time. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when I've got, when I'm dealing with very junior members, my preferred way of doing this, and this is usually what most teams are, is you'll have some junior folks and some senior folks. Yeah. And the senior folks can kind of guide the junior folks. Um, but if you're, and, and it also depends on kind of the corporate culture. Do you do a lot of pair programming? Do they frown on the pair programming? You know, do they want everybody just doing their own thing 40 hours a week? Well, um, but the junior folks need to have smaller chunks to work on because they need a little more, a little more guidance than the senior folks would. Unless you're pairing the junior and the senior together. Right. Which so is that they're constantly learning and becoming hopefully more senior. As they exactly. Work yeah. Someone. And that's my preferred environment to be in. I think that works best. But yeah, because the seniors are eventually going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> well, the juniors too, but. Plus, it's, you know, it's good to, you don't want one person teaching everybody else. You want people to have different pair ups to to get the most out of the different viewpoints and and looking at each aspect of the system right that they're working on yeah if you like this clip and want to watch another one you can click right here or if you want to watch the full video you can click here